So, JD, look, I want you to, to leave behind the rain, oh, Exeter, good. the A38. Yes. Um, the reality of your car. Yes. And just imagine mm -hmm. a studio. Right. I'll explain, I'll explain why. Well, we, talk, we talked about this yesterday a little bit. Yes. Um, I, last week, I was in, in um, well, mostly in Kendall, but I went to Lancaster to the university campus, which is being redesigned. It's a building site, really. Um, but eventually, sometime next year, it'll be very wonderful. And I see it as a, as a venue for video conversations. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a sort of direct line, a straight line goes up through the, through the middle of it. From InfoLab 21, which is a techie building at one end, to an arty building at the far end of it, via a business school and a central square, which has uh, a cafe, a learning zone, a library, and a bookshop, which is now just around the corner, but it was in that in that square at one point. So I see it as a as a linking route whereby you could have several conversations about uh, the potential of technology, uh, the business case or a critique, because the business school does social critique as well as business cases uh, for whatever it is this tech vision is about, and then uh, looking at how it works out in the library or the public space, and then what the, what the artists make of it and the philosophers, because they're on the, the next bit, they're a bit further north than the, the central square and then I thought well how could you do it as as radio and uh, I thought well you'd have an inspiring studio <laughs> <laughs> yes okay. a new so, radio station <laughs> called the inspiring studio you got it there it is there it is <laughs> because um, you 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 well there are some radio sta stations with fantastic studios that make you very happy and you've had no problem with them at all yes. presumably oh yes I get that feeling all the time. <laughs> but would you like to talk about um, an imagined studio of the future and what it would be like? Well, there is an article which I was reading, believe it or not, um, from, I don't know, it must be the 70s or something, a uh, newspaper article. Mm. And it says the year of the robot DJ is on its way. This and is in the seventies. This is in the seventies. Okay. So seventies, eighties. So you can see it's been. It was in in line for us <laughs> to replace us with <laughs> robots. So is that well, the way you game with robots or with, well, with well, well, whatever you find inspiring, JJ? I mean, the, this robot presumably has got to be told what to do in some way, or it's given some parameters or. Well, at the Something. moment, I mean, would, see, would it really be a terrible thing, or would mm. we benefit from it? At the moment, you see, you can you can do your whole program on a computer, yeah, and and you can do away with all the other te things you've got lying around you, and just do it on a pro computer. That's how I do my things at home, but in the, that takes out the skill. Okay. I think in the way we um, we we. So we've, why is the skill relevant? What would that? Well, it's like driving a car, automatic car. You lose nowadays. You lose all the perception of how to change gears or how to react in a situation because the car would do it for you. So now we're getting robot cars and trucks. You know, we might as well just so, say. So this studio would still have um, presenters or people who make a decision about whatever's going out and talk about it and things well, like that. Well, you could have robot presenters. <laughs> well, what is it? All I'm trying to get, get to is what you find inspiring. And what I you, find what inspiring in the studio is having lots of controls around you. Lots? Yes. And different things to do. Because I, I can sit in with a computer, no problem, but this gets me really well boring, really. So what would you have in your studio, then? It, 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 well, everything and everything. OK. Would you, have, would, tables, would you have cables? Would you do away with cables? Um, well, I don't know. I'm an old-fashioned guy. <laughs> so you find cables reassuring? Well, okay, cables are OK. But they're not even going to see them, you know. <laughs> but it's all part of the, the production thing in, in the way. Right. So, um, lots of screens, touch screens, would they be hanging from the ceiling? Would they be on the floor? Where would you, where would you put all these things? Well, the, scre the screens I would definitely put in front of me. Yeah. So I can see them all. And uh, not necessarily touch, because that loses that perception of how to control a computer. So what is your perception of how to control a computer? A mouse and a keyboard. 
a mouse and a keyboard. Yeah. So why is that? Like that's just something you're familiar with. Yeah, I'm familiar, and it's the old-fashioned way. Would it be very confusing if you were talking to the computer and to the microphone at the same time in the same? Um, it will be yes, because if, it's, if it answers back to my questions, <laughs> I sure want to know why. <laughs> well, presumably you could fade it out. Could well, you we, think so? We or could, it we would could. fade you out, perhaps. <laughs> If that's the case, I walk out of the studio. And then, <laughs> no, if we have one of these, what's, what's it called? These Alexa things. The, yeah, you yes. could have one of those in the we studio. Could, we could have one of those in the studio. Yes, yes. So you could talk to that and I could go off and have a cup of coffee. Yeah, and we <laughs> could say, Alexa, play some other radio station mm. for a bit and then we'll switch it to... OK, well, that's all fine. And where is this studio, JD? I mean, should it be in a basement in a rather obscure part of the building that nobody can get to very easily. No, no, it should be it should be uh, eye level <laughs> and easy access for anybody that's right. what to get into. Right. I've been in studios where you couldn't get, unfortunately, a disabled person into, which I would l love th that to happen. And some studios which were okay, you can get anybody and everybody inside, even climb out the window into the fresh air. You know, which is great. So we, at the moment, we, we tend to put studios in very obscure places, thinking that, um, you know, that's where our best production is going to come from, but not necessarily. So do you think any cafe, restaurant, public square, bus stop in a city or an urban space or in the countryside, for that matter, yeah. uh, could be used as a studio? Yes, you can do. Yes, there's, there's people who broadcast even from their living room, front living room, or what you know, having a cup of coffee. We, we're trying to make at the moment. You see, we're getting to this standard where, oh yeah, we've got to go to a radio station to make a program. But now, with the advance of technology, we can do it any way you like. Okay, so. It just it's, this is sort of imagined studio, an extension of, of what we're doing at the moment, let's say. Mm. We just want access to that, presumably. So yes, there's, still, it, there's still some, some sort of FM signal or something like that mm -hmm. as an option, one of the options of mm -hmm. how it's but the, uh, well, the FM signal, we keep saying it won't be around for long, but I don't know really because a lot of, pe lot of the older people like that technology. But mind you, I've come across the the uh, advancing years person, which should know quite a lot more than I do about uh, computers and things like that, because they they're trying to keep up with what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And you, you uh, have to know your audience that you're going to get, you know, especially at this time of the day, you'll probably get young people listening uh, to older people listening. To, uh, so you've got to cater for the whole spectrum. So that's the hardest bit of radio. Uh, c c what, it's just spreading the, uh, the age the music, range of the music? The music, the language you use, you yeah. know, that sort of yeah. thing. The humour which comes out of us every week. <laughs> we better watch that one. Um, <laughs> but it's it's the way in which you, you've got to perceive that... Um, my my way of broadcasting at the moment was when I was at hospital radio. We had to imagine there was an old person sitting opposite me, right? And I was just talking to them not quite naturally, right? And not on no radio, no microphone in front of me. And and normally we put a, we used to put a, put a photograph up, and we used to talk to the photograph, right? Yes, or we used to just describe a photograph to an older person. You know, it could be from the war years or whatever, or it could just be out. You know, because they're in hospital or in in a care home, and they they can't get out. So you have to describe the outside world to them. So I think that's what radio really is at the moment. You can you can have radio as just music all all the time, but the creativity of it is when a good radio program will come out. Okay, so we'll start. We'll start with that as inspiration, JD. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that is that's described our studio. So our studio uh, is everywhere, yes, but it, it also be. has a, an FM option. Let's mm. say, yeah. Well, it depends on how you're going to uh, perceive your output too. If your output is just take take a 
a cassette machine uh, mm. <laughs> around and record somebody's voice mm. and then play it to somebody yeah that is still radio because you you're conveying something which you've recorded edited and that is a form of radio so it depends on how you define radio well you're talking about sound communication well a sound communication, yes, but you're you're actually, at the moment you we, we we've got this big thing on the top of this building called an aerial, which <laughs> broadcasts to a lot of people far away. <laughs> uh, we believe so. We believe uh, so. Yes, and that brings in one six point eight. By the way. Yeah. Thank you. Carry on. Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's people who don't Sorry. know. Apparently, there's people who don't know what well, they're listening to. You're taking me off guard here. They, they've tuned in, but they can't remember how to get back to us. <laughs> well, if they're having problems, we're definitely having problems. Um, <laughs> so the, it doesn't matter where where you broadcast. You see, you could you could um, you could do what you've done with your PA system in a, in a fate, putting music out, which yes. you, and that is a sort of form of broadcasting. Yes. Yes. It reached a heavy tree a lot better than the phonic <laughs> FM signal, and I must say there's a, there's a hill in the way. Oh, dear. But the signal's about to be boosted. The phonic no, FM signal yes. is going to get much, much better if you are well, listening in heavy tree. Where I live, you can pick up phonic FM, and that's a long way away. <laughs> so it depends where you are. Um, yes, it's, it's a, the FM sig signal is a bit sort of um, hit and miss. I think in the way well, it's very local, isn't it? It is very local, and it depends on where you are in Exeter as well, as yes. you know. Yes, because I go and listen to you on top of a hill, and I can hear you absolutely beautifully on a Tuesday. So it depends really how the listener wants to listen to it, on what device. Yeah. To how you perceive your program, whether your program, as I said, is for radio, what we call radio, which is. <laughs> a studio and broadcasting through the FM or the internet or just put it, putting any item on the internet is broadcasting so it doesn't have to be sound um yes no no anything you anything you put up there is you're broadcasting something you're either broadcasting TV that's TV or you're broadcasting radio with sound okay how about that okay that sounds good does that well, get I your point? We, I think, yeah, I think we've, I think we've, um, in the time available, JD, we've, we've covered it completely. Right. Okay. I think we know what we're trying to do, and we assume the technology is available. Right. Well, I'm off for a cup of coffee, boy. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm going to push this button. Martha Reeves will be on tour in the UK quite soon. <laughs> 